Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Today, I'm about to win something on an auction that I've been looking for for a while. Old billboard tarps. And the auction has closed, and it looks like I won these tarps. So now we just gotta figure out a time to go over and pick up an entire pallet load of these things. All right, so I've got my billboard tarps home, and I'm discovering these don't quite match the auction description. Uh, the description claimed that these were black on the back, that they were all 5 mil vinyl, and it seems like they're more like 3 mil and they're all white on the back, so I don't know if I got a bait and switch here or if they just sold me the wrong pallet or what happened, but uh, I'm going to have to call the auction company and see if we can get something figured out with this. Hi, and welcome to the Save It For Tarps channel. That's right, Save It For Tarps. I've uh, somehow acquired hundreds and hundreds of these uh, polyethylene vinyl advertising tarps. These are former billboards printed on basically a plastic tarp, but the thinnest possible one you can get. And as I mentioned in some other videos, I got these as a auction screw-up. I was supposed to get about 50 heavy-duty 5 mil tarps. They gave me 300 light-duty tarps, and these are really crummy. Half of them are ripped up and abraded and just kind of destroyed. So I was going to make a boat out of the heavy-duty ones, or at least cover some boats outside, but these just fall apart when you even look at them funny, so they're kind of useless as anything to cover anything with. They're useless for any kind of waterproofing. I can't really use them, and even though I got a refund, the company refused to take them back. So right now my entire garage is stuffed full of these things. I can't even get to any of my other projects. My rail bike is buried. All my cabinets are buried. My workbench is buried. The airboat's buried. Even the tank's buried. There is nothing but tarps in this garage right now. So I put out a couple short videos asking people for ideas on what to do with all these things. And there have definitely been some interesting suggestions. I've got hot air balloon. That's been sent in by a few people. Break them down and weld them into something. Try to heat seal them together. Try to resin laminate them together or make them into fiberglass. Build a sail or sailboat. Build a boat hull. Here's another suggestion for fiberglass composites. Use them for house insulation. I actually do have a 1970s full boat kayak that I got from a viewer and a friend of a friend, and that was kind of the original plan for these. I was hoping to get the nice thick ones, wrap them around that folding kayak frame, and have a ridiculous advertising boat. Unfortunately, I don't think these are going to hold water unless I laminate five or six of them together, like some people are saying. And we might try that. It might end up just being this wrinkly nightmare, but we'll have to see what happens. That'll probably be a future video. Uh, somebody suggested a hang glider or a giant kite, a beach tent, a wind-powered rail speeder. That's actually yet another idea I had for the railroad speeder. And I actually have a little legitimate sailboat, which I was going to steal the mast and sail off of. Unfortunately, you guessed it, the sailboat is also buried under billboard tarps. Oh look, I even have more billboard tarps still in the car that I don't know where to put. Okay, so a lot of these suggestions depend on welding or gluing or laminating or otherwise attaching these tarps together so that I get a bigger surface area than just one. Each of these is about a 10 foot by 20 foot tarp. They're not the full size billboards, the 14 by 48 that you see along the road. I don't really know where these were used. They seem to be a non-standard size. And again, that's why I got my money back at the auction. These were supposed to be the 14 by 48 and they're just not. So if we do have to attach these together, how do we do it? We can try heat sealing, we could try glue, we could try tape, we could try sewing. I don't know how well these flimsy things are going to hold up to any of those methods. So let's just give a few of them a try and see what happens. Okay, so first question, will these even hold up to a high enough temperature to melt them together or to use for a hot air balloon? Okay, that does absolutely nothing, but it's not very hot. If we want to do a hot air balloon, we're going to need some propane or something a little more energetic. So let's try that. Well, it holds up okay to that. We gave the guy a little bit of a facelift with the melting, but it didn't melt as much as I expected. I'm experimenting with one of the ripped ones here, so I'm not wasting a good tarp. Now, unfortunately, I don't think I can use this as heat shrink or shrink it to fit a boat or something. The fibers here pull apart when they melt, so it gets more holes in it. This weave also makes it really hard to cut. Uh, this is a scissors cut, and it's kind of smooth, but then the edges are already starting to peel apart. Again, this is the cheapest possible tarp material. This is the stuff you'd pay like $2 for at the hardware store. Let's see if I can heat seal two pieces back together with this really quick and dirty redneck heat sealing rig. Oh, 
Okay, that does not work. It just melts and it rips apart. There's no structural stability with heat sealing it that way. I'm sure I'm doing it at the wrong temperature, but I don't know if there is a correct temperature that's going to form a strong bond and not just melt it. All right, can we hot glue it together? That seems fairly promising. The glue did not melt all the way through. And it actually made a pretty strong bond. Like, uh, I can tear it apart, but I'm damaging the tarp, not the glue. So hot glue seems really promising. How about tape? Well, not this tape. This brand is garbage. This doesn't stick to anything. All right, well, let's stick together with good duct tape. Yeah, reasonably well. Not as good as hot glue, but it does stick okay. This might be a way to patch any small holes that I find in the tarps along the way. All right, now how about fiberglassing with this stuff? Now, when I was growing up, a lot of people referred to fiberglass boats as plastic, so I've gotten those two terms kind of mixed together in my head. But in reality, some of the chemicals that go into real fiberglass don't get along with plastic, and I'm concerned it might eat right through this stuff. Now, fiberglass also generates some heat when it's curing, as it is a two-part reaction between the resin and the hardener, so we'll see if this stuff holds up to the heat. As you may have guessed, my paintbrushes are all buried under tarps, so we're going to be applying it with a toothbrush. So my fiberglass test has sat long enough for it to set up. Well, it should have set up if it was real fiberglass, but unfortunately it really hasn't worked with this tarp. It's still just as crinkly as the tarp was. It has not solidified. The resin itself has solidified here, but since this is woven plastic and not really individual fibers, the resin and hardener can't soak in. It can't get in between the fibers of the material and really set it all together. It just hardens on the surface, kind of like paint. And yes, I did put my resin on both sides, and I had it kind of shaped around this form, thinking that it would solidify into a cup shape. But as you can see, fiberglass resin doesn't work on this stuff at all. Now, as far as the hot air balloon idea, we did some really rough math and figured that each of these approximately 10 by 20 foot tarps, if made into a perfect sphere, would hold enough hot air to lift about four pounds. And coincidentally, each of these tarps weighs about four pounds. So theoretically, each one could lift its own weight. Now, we can't get a perfect sphere out of them, but we can cut them into strips, and if we can glue them together in some way that doesn't add a lot of weight through the adhesive, we could theoretically make a big balloon envelope. Now, I definitely can't test that one in my yard because we do live in a city and we have helicopters flying over and whatnot, but maybe we could do that out at Sandland. I think that's going to be another video and probably way, way down the road because I am not prepared to make a hot air balloon just yet. So if anyone out there is looking to buy used billboard tarp, stay away from the thinner material. I think the technical specs on this are 3 mil, uh, approximately 2 ounces per square yard, and on the labels here it's called an eco poster. I don't know if that means that it's biodegradable or just that it uses less material than a traditional billboard, but uh, apparently that's what this stuff is. These little labels are nice if you can find them because they give you a preview of the graphic and the label of what's on the tarp. These are some of the only nice folded up ones that I got. 90% of them were just kind of loose or wadded up and stapled together. Another way you can tell these are the thin ones is because they're only about 4 pounds per folded up tarp, as opposed to about 25 to 30 pounds for the full size billboards made of the thicker material. Now another suggestion for use for these was landscaping fabric or weed control. But if you've ever had a blue tarp go bad over the winter and rip apart on your boat, you know what it's like to pick blue plastic confetti out of the yard for months afterwards. I don't really want to do that with these. I've asked some farmers if they want them, haven't really heard back, so I suspect it's the same story there. They don't want to deal with these things when they shred apart in the wind. Now another thing about these is, unlike the traditional hardware store tarps, these don't have grommets or rings along the edge. They just have this plastic channel that you'd put a rod or a rope through. So if you want to use these as tarps, you're going to have to put in your own grommets. Now I do have a grommet kit with enough grommets for probably one tarp, so I could do that if I wanted, but it's not really worth the effort. Okay, I'm kind of running out of things to say about these tarps. We've tried a few basic experiments with them. We found some ways we could possibly work with the material, adhere it together, 
cut it up, reshape it, maybe do some things with it. And so we're going to try some more experiments and possibly some creations with it in the future. Maybe we'll try to make some boats. Maybe we'll try to make some kites. Maybe we'll try to make something that flies. I don't know yet. Stay tuned for that. See what we come up with. Hopefully I'll be doing this sooner rather than later because I would like my garage back. I would like to be free of the infinite tarp nightmare that has become all of my storage and workspace. So go ahead and like and subscribe so you see what becomes of all this stuff. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.